Well, hi, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Mark Rabin from Kinexus. I'll be playing host today, and I'm really excited with the opportunity here. Um, a few months back, one of our Kinexus customers, it was actually Simon DeCastro, who presented a webinar earlier this year in English. He suggested that it would be good to have somebody present a webinar in Spanish. That's um, Simon's uh, first language. And um, we got introduced to Albanesa Amaya, who's going to be our presenter today. Um, the live webinar that she's going to present on December 6th will be in Spanish. And today we're recording um, the English language uh, version uh, for people like myself who don't speak Spanish. But we're really excited that we get to share this content um, with a, a broader audience. And let me um, now introduce um, our presenter, Albanesa Imaya. Um, she is coming to us uh, and she is from the Dominican Republic. Um, she is the founder, president and CEO of Imaya Lean Academy, Inc. With more than 17 years as an industrial engineer, working with lean transformations in the manufacturing sector, both medical devices and electronics, she has a post degree in quality and productivity management. Um, she's certified in many things, including being a Lean Six Sigma black belt. Uh, Albanesa has more than 17 years as a professor at institutes and universities. She's trained more than 6,000 people in Latin America, the Caribbean, the United States, and Europe. She's uh, had many roles. She's led different lean transformations in countries including the Dominican Republic, Mexico, and the United States. She's managed project portfolios uh, of more than $10 million and has received multiple international awards, including Lean Coach of the Year, Lean Plant of the Year, and an operational Operations Excellence Award. And more recently, um, she started to support um, an effort, um, a nonprofit called the Love and Kindness Foundation, which was uh, founded by Karen Ross, who many of you may know from the Lean community. Um, Albanesa has the role of Caribbean region director. So thank you, Albanesa, for um, supporting those important efforts and very excited to turn it over to you for your presentation. Thank you, Mark, really, uh, for the invitation. Uh, really, I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Uh, sharing some of my experience in the Lean journey. And thank you so much to JJ Puentes also for all the support uh, in this process in order to be uh, totally ready uh, for today. So thank you so much. So uh, today uh, we are going to cover uh, different uh, topics uh, as part of this uh, webinar. We are going uh, to talk about, you know, some general uh, definitions uh, like uh, uh, to refreshments for some of you, uh, other definitions that maybe will be new, uh, brand new for some of you. I'm going to talk about the uh, goals for improvement for each one of these uh, approaches for Kakaku and Kaizen even. Uh, also, I'm going to to charge the different uh, common themes and differences between the approaches. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going to share the benefits came from each one of these approaches in a very visual way uh, and also explain why really I recommend a uh, first Kaikaku and later to continue the journey with Kaizen Eden and others continuous improvement and methodology. And uh, finally, at the end of the process, I'm going to share uh, the formula that I have been using as part of the different lean transformation process that I, I manage. So now it's very important that we open really our mind, yeah, in order to receive the new knowledge that is part of this uh, material. So uh, why I say that? Because as Mark uh, mentioned uh, before, uh, the more common concepts, you know, uh, known into the lean practitioners and in different companies, it's really Kaizen even uh, more than Kaikaku. So uh, in this uh, in this part, uh, it's very important uh, to be willing uh, to receive, you know, the new knowledge that we have prepared uh, for today. So uh, let's start uh, first, uh, really, uh, with the different general uh, definitions. We have some general definition with the intentions, you know, to, to get a better understanding of the different topic that we are going to, to share uh, today with all of you. So let's start. 
And, uh, as you can see uh, here, uh, we have the general and the most common definition for Kaizen. What is Kaizen? As you know, uh, or maybe no, but uh, most of you I know that you that know that Kaizen is a Japanese word that literally means change for the better. Yeah, change for the better. This is the more common definition for Kaizen, but also uh, we have included uh, this very good uh, definition from Masaki Imai, who is considered the father of continuous uh, improvement, and he is author of Kaizen and Genbat Kaizen Book. So please let me read literally what Masaki Imai said. Masaki Imai said that Kaizen means improvement. Moreover, it means continue improvement in personal life, home life, social life, and working life. When applied to the workplace, Kaizen means continue improvement involving everyone, managers and workers alike. So this final uh, part is very, very important yeah, uh, to highlight, involving managers and workers uh, alike. So, after uh, refreshing these uh, terminologies or this definition from Kaizen, uh, I'm going to present the four types of Kaizen because uh, as already uh, know, yeah, uh, we know that Kaizen in a short way is improvement, but maybe you don't know that there are four types of Kaizen or four types of continuous improvement methodology that this is the the first part that I want to share with all of you today. So these are Kaizen Teian, Kaizen Iben, yeah, the more known, Kaikaku and Kakushin. So what is a Kaizen Teian? Kaizen Teian is, um, is about people's suggestion. Yeah? It's, it's very known like a, a people idea, a people's suggestion. This is from the individual that has the possibility to implement his own uh, improvement, you know, in the in the workplace. So, the Kaizen Teia is really important to support a continuous improvement a culture, and also the Kaizen Teia help a lot of to create that we call it a autonomous autonomous team, yeah, due to the empowerment that we give to the individual as part of the continuous improvement a culture. So. The other Kaizen type is Kaizen Even. So Kaizen Even is a continuous improvement activity uh, that is formed from different uh, individuals that came from different areas, a multifunctional team, including you know, people from different roles, uh, managers, operators, engineers, superv supervisors, uh, etc with the intention to improve one single process, yeah? Uh, this is the, the first uh, intention of Kaizen even, to improve uh, just uh, one process or just to address one issues as part of the process or to improve one single uh, indicator. So Kaizen even uh, also is well known like a Kaizen bliss. This is other definition of Kaizen even, yeah? We call it like a, a Kaizen Bliss. Uh, the other uh, Kaizen is Kaikaku. And what is Kaikaku? So Kaikaku really uh, means in a short definition, radical change. When we talk about Kaikaku, we are talking uh, about uh, to change or to redesign a complete system, yeah? is very, very different to Kaizen Even because as already explained, Kaizen Even, yeah, the focus is to improve one single uh, process. So Kaikaku looks yeah, to transform and to change one completed process from point A to point B. Yeah, it's very important uh, this uh, difference uh, about this uh, terminology. So. Uh, Kaizen even looks, you know, um, very uh, incremental or gradual improvement. Kaikaku looks a uh, radical, radical uh, change. Um, other, other part here is the, uh, when we talk about uh, Kaizen even, in most of the cases, uh, the Kaizen even 
uh, just use one link tools or continuous improvement, you know, tools in order to address uh, the situations. Uh, the more common are 5S, uh, TPM, um, the task balancing, value add, no value add uh, analysis, uh, SME, etc. So why Kaikaku really, uh, in difference to Kaizen even, Kaikaku use the combination of all link tools, strategies, and methodologies that are needed, and also complemented with any Six Sigma uh, tools that, uh, that we needed in order to get the transformation of the process, yeah? Kakushin, what is Kakushin? Kakushin is similar really to Kaikaku, yeah? Because uh, both of them, both Kaikaku and Kakushin are radical chains, but uh, Kakushin is more about innovation, yeah? Uh, when we call, we talk about Kaikaku, we are talking about to change the, the way of how the things are done. When we talk about Kakushin, uh, we are talking about to change how it's doing, yeah? How it's doing, what is done. For example, uh, when we talk about Kaikaku, uh, Kaikaku could be, uh, for example, to change from manual process to automated process, yeah? Um, what could be Kakushin? Kakushin, in, in the same way, could be uh, to print uh, 3D uh, the raw materials that will be used, for example, for this, for this process. And Kakushin is more linked to innovation, is to change yeah, what, is, what is doing totally. Yeah? Kaikaku change how the things are doing. Kakushin changes what is done. Yeah. So and what is the reason that uh, Kaikaku um, and also Kakushin in this case are not well known um, in the community or in the in the in the company? So uh, I think that based on, on my experience, I can tell that maybe this happened due to the, the complexity that is uh, as part of the Kaikaku process, or maybe because in some cases it's, mis it's mis or, or misunderstood, you know, the scope of the Kaikaku or Kaizen even. I think this is the reason of why maybe just uh, the Lean practitioners has been more focused uh, to work uh, with Kaizen uh, even. So now uh, let's continue really talking about the, the goal of, for improvement of its uh, approach. So let's see. And what is the goal? The goal really for Kaikaku and, and Kaizen even, because uh, previously we talked, you know, about the four type of Kaizen, but uh, from now, really, I'm going to be very focused just about the comparison of Kaikaku and Kaizen even. And what is the principal goal? The principal goal for each one of the approaches is to improve. But what is the difference? The difference is the scope of the improvement. Because uh, Kaizen even, as already explained, has the scope, yeah, as a scope, is just to improve one problem, one issues, one single, you know, process. Why the, really the score for Kaikaku yeah, is to improve a lot of, a lot of opportunity at the same time, impacting really uh, the five uh, kids indicators that are present in any company. Uh, the five kids in the indicators present in any company are the safety, uh, the quality, um, the cost, the delivery, um, and the people, yeah? So it is very important uh, to understand uh, uh, that part, yeah? Uh, because uh, in chart, yeah, if somebody asks you what is the goal, the goal is to improve, yeah, but uh, the dimensions, the magnitude of improvement is totally, is totally really uh, different, so. Uh, and now, uh, after you know uh, understanding uh, what is the goal, uh, let's let's continue uh, that part. Yeah, uh, uh, talking about what is common and what is different. As you know, there are a variety really of things in common uh, between Kaikaku and Kaizen even 
as well as differences. So, but uh, first, uh, let's start talking about the common things uh, for these uh, approaches. So, uh, these uh, common things really that I have here came from my, my experience, yeah? From my experience, um, I put in some of the common things that uh, I know that, that has between these approaches, between Kaikaku and between Kaisen even. The first common thing is that both approaches fall on a structured methodology. A PDCA cycle or, or the main. Yeah, PDCA, you know, plan, do, check, and act. And the main, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Uh, they need accurate data to support the effectiveness of the process. Yeah, as you know, uh, for any activities or to improve, it's very important to have accurate data. Without data or without measurement, it's impossible really uh, to improve. So also Kaikaku and Kaizen Ipen are supported by multifunctional team as other continuous improvement activity as well. It requires a leadership and commitment, it demands a employee training in lean concepts and principles in order, you know, to, uh, to, get, to have a better flow of the process from the beginning until the end. Uh, it's expected really from the employee uh, that they are willing to change and promote the change. This is expected from its employees that is part of its one of these continuous improvement activities uh, based on transparency and honesty. Here really is very, very, very important and I wanted to highlight, the biggest highlight that, that part, based on transparency and honesty to expose issues and find the best solution, yeah? As any continuous improvement activity without transparency also, it's impossible uh, to improve, yeah? If we hire the problem, never you are going to be, uh, you know, on the way to improve. It's, it's very important that. Uh, the other part that is uh, common between Kaikaku and Kaizen Ipen is that one of the key resources expected yeah, from the people is the involvement uh, and the development. Yeah, that is part, obviously, of this one of approaches. Uh, use people idea as the best uh, sources of problems, uh, resolutions and innovation. And the best way to run uh, each one is through the team. Yeah, the teamwork is also a, a foundation uh, to be successful in each one of these continuous improvement methodology as well as any other activities that, that we are done, you know? Okay, uh, after reviewing, you know, the different uh, common things that are between Kaikaku and, and Kaizen even. So let me uh, really uh, start uh, with uh, explaining the differences uh, between Kaikaku and, and Kaizen even. Uh, also, these differences came from uh, from my speed and you know from the knowledge that that I have uh, in this uh, environment. Uh, I know there could be uh, more uh, differences, but. Uh, I put in the principles that are, I'm very sure, you know, that are between these uh, approaches. Uh, the first one, as you can see uh, in this in this chart, uh, this is the first differences, the biggest uh, differences. As you can see, yeah, we have the representation here. We have the gain, impact, or benefit in this in this uh, place, and and also, uh, sorry. We have the, the impact benefit uh, here, yeah? And we have the time and we have the effort. So what is the, the biggest difference here? The biggest difference is related to the impact versus, you know, the effort. And you can see in the chart, in the same time, we are, I am, I'm comparing, yeah? I'm comparing the Kaizen event uh, versus Kaikaku or also transformation process or lean transformation that some people call. At the same time, uh, we have that the Kaizen even request yeah, less effort than Kaikaku, you, obviously. Uh, for that reason, yeah, in the other part, we have the Kaikaku request yeah, more effort, but uh, at the same time, 
you can receive yeah more benefit from the from the process more impact more gain yeah this is the the first uh, differences uh, between uh, that part so let's let's continue uh, reviewing the the other part other uh, differences found is is related to the tense uh, commandment that governs it's one of these uh, approaches uh, we have really uh, this uh, here, yeah? One of the uh, Kaikaku commandments and Kaizen commandments. Uh, in some, some of them, uh, as you can read, some of them are uh, really a little similar uh, and other are uh, stay in different, in different way. Uh, Kaikaku commandment came from uh, Hiroyuki Irano and the Kaizen commandments are taken from Gemba Academy uh, videos. So, uh, the sum of, of the commandment that I, I want to, to highlight is, for example, the first one related to Kaikaku is, you know, to stop thinking about traditional concepts of, of manufacturing method methodology. Um, the Kaizen commandment, the first one is open, yeah, your, your mind to, to change. We need to, to be willing really to, to change. So, uh, other ones, a uh, commandment that I want to uh, to highlight is, is that for me in Kaikaku, yeah? don't spend money. Don't spend money uh, on Kaikaku because in my experience, when we talk about transformation, so uh, radical change, uh, in some cases, uh, I have faced some uh, people that really understand that this means uh, that we need to spend a lot of money in order to, uh, to get yeah, this radical change, the transformation of the process. Really, a lot of people don't believe that it's possible uh, to complete an kaikaku or lean transformation uh, spending uh, a little, a little, a little money, really. Um, um, in most of the cases, really, in my experience, uh, I can assure you that the transformation that I have been working on has required really a little uh, investment because as other of the commandment, yeah, other of the commandment is to use the, the creativity, yeah, like uh, here. We have here in the Kaizen commandment, we have use creativity, not capital, yeah, you know. So I really, uh, you compare I really so similar on the meaning of its one. You know? So it's very, really interesting because the last one say Kaikaku knows no limits. And the Kaizen commandment said, there is no destination on the improvement journey. So the statements are different, but uh, really uh, the meaning of each one of the commandments, I, I can say that, I can say that are equal yeah from 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 the meaning of the so other a uh, uh, good difference really related to a uh, kaizen and kaikaku uh, approaches is related to the the general uh, structure that it's one uh, of the approaches follow so i i have put in here a, a little chart yeah for it's one of the structure in order to represent the differences so the first one is the Kaizen even general structure. Uh, you can see we have uh, like a similar to cycle. Really, it's not cycle. It's, it's like a similar. We have input, we have global process, and we have output expect. Yeah. And here, uh, I want to to say that related to inputs, the inputs are the same uh, for Kaizen even and for Kaikaku. Yeah, are the same uh, inputs required. What is different uh, between the approaches is, is the magnitude and the effort related to KPI information, yeah? We have in both structure, we have KPI information as an input required, but the differences is related to the magnitude of the analysis and the effort that we needed in each one of them based on, you know, of the scope. So, in general, we have uh, for inputs, we have leadership support. We need a um, core team, uh, about eight, 10 people. This is the average. 
Uh, in some cases, you know, we can have 12 people, but uh, it's not the most uh, common, not the most uh, recommendation, really. The, the size of the team recommended is about this number, eight, 10 people uh, from multifunctional uh, area. Uh, we need a uh, training material to be used as part of the event uh, development. Uh, we need a uh, office supply. We need, as I mentioned, KPI information data, yeah, real data. Uh, we need lean SME, subject matter expert, in order to lead the process and to teach you know, uh, any uh, lean principles, any lean tools, methodology that the team need in order to run correctly uh, the process. Um, this uh, lean SME could be an OPEX leader, could be an Kaizen even leader uh, training or, or certify, you know. Uh, we need a um, work room uh, according to the need. So uh, let, me, let me tell you something. Uh, this school seems like uh, irrelevant, this point. But uh, in my experience, really, it's very important also to have um, a space you know, a prepared uh, to run and kaizen or continuous improvement activity. This gives to the team really the opportunity to run in a correct way, you know, in an easy flow of the process and help in the effectiveness, yeah, and in the cycle time of the activity. It's very important that point also. Um, food, and, uh, food and drinks uh, to support, you know, uh, the team during the activities. The global process is divided in three parts, three principal parts. The pre-event plan that it has a um, cycle time in average of 15 or 30 days. It will depend, you know, the company or the process. Um, the event development for Kaizen even as you know, is around three to five days, a full day, eight, eight hours per day. Um, most of the, the Kaizen even really wrong using five days. Um, a little, in little cases, um, some Kaizen events use three days. It will depend the process and the company, but the more, the more normal is to use a five a completed day to run really the Kaizen event. Uh, this step also is known as the Kaizen Event Week, yeah? And the last part is the action plan completion that in average, it takes um, 30 days, yeah? This part is important also to, to say that from a Kaizen Event Week, it's expected that we, you know, complete all the process, including the implementation of some improvement, but... Uh, the reality is that in most of the cases, uh, a lot of activities um, still um, stay, you know, uh, keep uh, pending. And for that reason, we have the horizon of 30 days, calendar day, to complete any action that was not possible to implement during the Kaizen event week. As output, what is the, the principal output expected for any Kaizen event is, you know, the the issue or the problem eliminated or improved, uh, have more engagement of, from the people, from the employees, uh, best practices shared in different areas, uh, employee training that is part of the cultural, you know, um, saving and cost reduction. So uh, I put in the, this saving and cost reduction as last because as you know, the the principal objectives in any, in any really a continuous improvement activity is, is no cost reduction from the beginning. It's not supposed to be cost reduction. It's supposed to be a cultural change, yeah? But as part of the process, yeah, we have, we receive uh, some benefit cost reduction uh, as well. So the uh, Kaikaku structure, uh, let's see the, the Kaikaku structure. As, as you know, it's very similar. Huh? It's similar just uh, in, in the inputs part, but uh, I mentioned before the differences. Uh, it's very different related to global process about the timing, about the timings, about the management role, about the magnitude and the effort. And also it's very different related to the action plan phase, yeah? Uh, here is, is like a, a equal, yeah? Uh, just the KPI information magnitude and effort is different. 
And here, the pre-event, yeah, as you can know, uh, the, the pre-event for the Kaikaku request uh, in less a uh, 15 day, full day, eight hours, yeah, every day, yeah. The event development uh, also requests um, 15 day, yeah, eight hours, and the transformation process in average requests from 60 day to 180 day. But let me also say, based on the practice, yeah, it will depend on differences. It will depend on uh, leadership, it will depend on the core team commitment, it will depend on the companies, you know, priority. In some cases, Kaikaku could take um, until one year, yeah, until 12 months uh, to be totally uh, complete. But in average, it's expected to close uh, the Kaikaku process between 60 days and 180 days. This is the, the expectation based on the experience, yeah. And the different output, totally different from Kaizen events are some of them here. We have improved operational performance, a stable production uh, environment, improves the gross margin from the company, improves flow, different uh, kind of flow, uh, has completed different projects or Kaizen, yeah, because uh, Kaikaku also, we can say that Kaikaku is like uh, the compilation of a lot of uh, Kaizen uh, activities. And the other points are common with uh, Kaizen even as already explained. So um, let's continue talking about the differences yeah, between these approaches. So this is the, the last the differences that I have here. Yeah, it's very critical, it's important. Uh, these uh, differences is related to leadership. Uh, in this case, leadership of company are more open to start with Kaizen even rather than to start with Kaikak. Why this happens? So I can tell you that this happened for different reasons and some of them are maybe lack of understanding of its approach. Uh, misunderstanding of the scope of its one, the fear uh, to come from, you know, to do uh, things uh, totally different, uh, the belief of Kaikaku requests a, a lot of money or a lot of resources in order to be uh, successful, and the belief also that uh, a step by a step is better to create really anchors or so. But the experience uh, told me that uh, the best way is totally really different. That is the, the one of the last part that I'm going to, to explain. So uh, let's continue now talking about the, the benefits. So uh, as you know, the benefit is improved. Yeah, but uh, improves what? We need to improve uh, productivity. So. Kaizen even and Kaikaku also improve productivity in general as an as a wall from the organ for any organization. So, but the magnitude of the impact in the in the each one are totally you know different. So, I want to use this representation. Really, I like a, I like a lot of uh, to use a visual representation to explain the the, the meaning of this thing. So. I have put in uh, the one apple uh, to represent the Kaizen even benefit and the apple tree uh, to represent the Kaikaku benefit. And what does this mean? This means that when you roll on Kaizen even, uh, you are going to receive your one apple as a benefit from all the universe or from all the possibilities that you have yeah, into, into your organization, into your processes. The other part, when you run and Kaikaku and Lean Transformation, you are going to receive the wall a apple trees. Yeah, you are going to receive all the possible benefits that are present, you know, uh, in your process. This is the uh, uh, the biggest, you know, difference uh, about a uh, benefits from Kaikaku and for Kaizen uh, even. So uh, let's see, uh, let's continue uh, 
that's part, sorry, uh, talking about uh, kids benefits from Kaikaku. I wanted to give more information about Kaikaku because as previously mentioned, we know that Kaizen even looks to improve one process, one process from all of the that I have here, but at Kaikaku looks to improve all the process at the same time, giving you a major really impact, yeah? As I mentioned, when I start the presentation, the Kaikaku really impact at the same time these five uh, indicators that you have in your company. Yeah, we have safety, uh, <clears throat> we have quality, sorry, we have delivery costs and people are into each one of these indicators. We have a lot of improvement that came from Kaikaku. And here I put a, just a, some of the improvement that came from a, after Kaikaku completion. So we have a accident and incident decrease, ergonomy improved, a fatigue reduction into the safety indicator. So into the quality, we have also a lot of, a lot of improvements, some of them here, a discrepancies, discrete, complaints, you know, customer complaint, very important, decrease, um, process and material, rejects, reductions, um, and the end, you are going to have the total quality cost really uh, reduction, yeah? A lot of improvement came from Kaikaku activity. Um, into the delivery, uh, the, lead, the delivery time is improved, the lead time is reduced, uh, we create flow, flows material, yeah, flow for the process and also flow uh, of the information. As part of the, the costing, the costing area, we have a lot of, a lot of benefit also. Labors, material variants, uh, the cost per unit of the product, uh, over time, all the ways, all the ways reduction, yeah. Uh, over time reduction, inventory level uh, reduction, uh, space, energy, uh, spare part consumption, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Into the people area, you have also a major, major benefits. Uh, and one of the biggest is the uh, behavior, behavior improved for, for the people. That is the key yeah, to be successful, yeah, and to, be, um, and to su sustain the continuous improvement course for in any organization. Uh, we have uh, people uh, involved in grief, education of the people, the people talent, uh, people talent development uh, is improved also, you know. Um, uh, at the end, all these, you know, has uh, the biggest uh, benefit that is the culture, the culture, yeah, the culture improved. So, uh, let's let's continue uh, after after that part. Really, uh, after uh, explaining that, uh, yeah, I want to um, to tell you why I say that Kaikaku activity could be first uh, than Kaisen even uh, because maybe I don't know. I'm not sure, but maybe you are thinking about that. Okay, Albanesa now is told me to me that is talking to me that uh, I need to stop to doing kaizen even and to start thinking to uh, to start with kaikaku and forget kaizen even activities. No, this is not the message. Yeah, the message is not to stop doing kaizen. No, the message is that you need both. Yeah, really, you need both of the of the Kaizen activity. Yeah, the only that I'm recommending is a start before with Kaikaku and later, yeah, continue the transformation with Kaizen even activity. And let me explain that using this uh, picture also. Yeah. Uh, as I say, Kaikaku and Kaizen even are not mutually really as exclusive, yeah? In this picture, yeah, I put in this, um, this funny uh, picture to, to explain why I say that. Uh, here, the chance from junior to, to senior, yeah, represent the, the Kaikaku. That is the radical chain, that is the 
the revolutionary, you know, uh, activities. While the Kaizen event here is represented by the, the circle, yeah, that provides to this senior, yeah, the atmosphere for continuous improvement, yeah. Kaikaku, uh, Kaikaku gives you radical change, radical impact, move the process from point A to point B in a radical way. And why this is important? As you can know in the other picture, when, when you have the five fire, yeah, and we have the five fire, it's not the same to try, you know, to, uh, to suffocate the, the fire using just your, your hand, yeah, that is the Kaizen, uh, yeah, a little, a little, uh, uh, in, instead of to use Kaikaku. So the idea is to, when you are in front of opportunity, you need to add, yeah, to, to broken all the opportunity and to attack all the opportunity at the same time in order to create the momentum. You need to create the momentum to give to the, to the people really the, the, the flavor of what is um, about continuous improvement. If you start at first using a Kaizen event, in some cases, uh, the people really don't see the impact immediately. This is the one of the why I recommend before uh, to use Kaikaku, yeah, in order to create this momentum, this impact for the organization, for the business, and for the people, it's like a, to create a continuous improvement showroom. Yeah, when you complete Kaikaku, you create a continuous improvement showroom that gives to the company, to the leadership, and to its employee the confidence that continuous improvement really has good thing for everybody, for company and for people. And after you complete Kaikaku, immediately you need to continue yeah, the progress of the transformation throughout Kaizen event in order to create the, the culture of continuous improvement and to create the sustainability uh, of, the, of the process. Yeah, this is the, the why really. Uh, I recommend, yeah, based on my experience, start first with Kaikaku and later continue with uh, Kaizen event uh, activities, yeah? So Kaikaku, uh, as I mentioned, is totally um, revolutionary, yeah? Um, it's radical change. So Kaizen event is, you know, is incremental change. It's a step by a step. And it's better recommended uh, use Kaizen even uh, to create the sustainability of the process. So uh, let me now uh, share really the, the method that I has been used as part of the uh, completion of uh, transformation for the process. I start, as you know, I start talking about this for a uh, tie of Kaizen, yeah? And during the presentation, I was focused just to compare Kaikaku with Kaizen even. But the reality is that in order to complete that I call it the real link transformation, yeah, I recommend to use this formula in this, in this way, yeah? We need to use the Kaikaku first, followed by Kaizen even, followed by Kaizen Teian and Kakushin. In some cases, some of them happen at the same time and it's okay. But uh, always, based on my experience, yeah, we need to start with Kaikaku. Um, the formula also includes to be focused on these three parts, yeah? People, product, and process. That I call it the 3P uh, LT. What is the, um, the 3P? People, product, process, a link transformation. Yeah? The 3P. A LT uh, process transformation, yeah? We need to transform not just the process, we need to transform people, yeah? And we need to transform also product. So this is, this is for me really the, um, an excellent formula uh, to transform any, any, any kind of, of process or business, yeah? Uh, obviously, it requires a, a lot of uh, leadership, a commitment, support, 
believe that is very important. Uh, we need to uh, to believe in in all these uh, continuous improvement uh, activities. Yeah, in order to be uh, successful, uh, let me um, present uh, this uh, example. When you use a, a kaikaku, this is just uh, an example. Uh, uh, from a real uh, kaikaku uh, implemented uh, to present you the as the use uh, this formula kaikaku, kaisen even, kaisen teian, and kakushin, you can really uh, get a lot of good things. Yeah, you can have more with less. Yeah, more, more people focus, more people development. Yeah, in order to have uh, a better process, we leave less resources, less complexity, less problem, less issues, yeah, less machine, less space, less waste. So it is very, really easy to see uh, the impact. Yeah, we have here a process before uh, to, to start the, the transformation with a lot of complexity. An aster, yeah, this, this picture is an aster, but uh, this is the aster of the transformation on the beginning. What I'm saying that really after some uh, months, uh, the, the, the process really looks uh, better and better and better, yeah, for the learning curve of the, of the process uh, also. Uh, as you can know, aster and um, kaikaku uh, or link transformation using the formula, and we have a, a lot of a lot of benefit, yeah. A focus on the three P, yeah. Focus on people, focus on process, and focus on problem. So, uh, business really are like a, a butterfly, yeah. First, they need transformation, and later sustainability. And for that reason, yeah. The best approach is Kaikaku first and Kaisen even later, yeah? Kaikaku gives you the transformation and Kaisen even gives you the sustainability process that, that you need, yeah, to create the cultural change. So thank you so much for your attention. I really hoping that this uh, webinar add value to each one uh, of you. So any question? Well, thank you, Albanesa. We'll do a few announcements and then I have um, a couple questions. And if people attend live on December 8th, the audience will be able to um, ask questions. Um, a couple of quick announcements. Um, we have upcoming webinars. If you are a Kinexus customer, you can attend the next training team office hours with Adam and Matt on December 3rd. And we don't have um, dates or registration open yet, but Get to give a bit of a preview, I'm very excited that the first three 2021 webinars are lined up. In January, we're going to have uh, Stephanie Hill presenting. In February, Scott Bergmeier. Um, this is going to be a follow-up to a webinar that he did a couple of months back. And then in March, uh, Deandra Wardell is going to be presenting um, about, about Toyota Kata. So we're going to have a, a lot of different interesting themes. Um, coming up in 2021, and uh, we hope you'll join us for those webinars at, as we get into the new year. Um, if this is your first time viewing a Kinexus webinar, we have a huge continuous improvement webinars on demand library. I need to go, I never know the number off the top of my head. There are dozens, maybe a hundred uh, past webinars in the library. They're all free. You can find the recordings at kinexus.com slash webinars. We invite you to check out our blog, which is at blog.kinexus.com. And we invite you to um, subscribe to our podcast. So the audio from all of the webinars, including uh, today's with Albanesa, and we'll, I think, do the same with the Spanish version. Um, these are in our podcast feed. You can find it through Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, pretty much any place you find podcasts. And um, you can see we've got um, Albanese's uh, web and email addresses on screen. Uh, maybe just uh, a couple of questions um, for you, Albanese. Um, as you work in different countries, 
Um, how often do you find resistance to the different Japanese words? Do you ever get asked to translate it um, into Spanish or other languages? <laughs> yeah, a lot of all the time, really. <laughs> this is the this is the more normal to find, you know, the the resistance not just to the terminology, also to the 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 link process, the continuous improvement, you know. Uh, a journey and the more normal is to find a uh, resistance and uh, no matter really the, the country. Uh, the level of resistance will be different. And really in my experience, it will not depend on the country. It will depend on the leadership. Mm -hmm. yeah. It will depend on the leadership of its company because I have worked in different companies in the same country, but uh, the, the resistance level is different totally from one to other. Um, in my thinking, really, I understand that is totally linked to the to the leadership. Okay, thanks. Um, one other question here: You recommend that teams for kaizen events or kaikaku activity um, are between eight to ten people, um, but sometimes you might want um, more people if you want representatives from different job functions or departments. What's some of the risk of having a larger team from your experience, Albanesa? Yeah, when you have, uh, it is okay. Uh, so you wanted to have, I, as I mentioned really, I have managed a team a little biggest. Uh, this team on the, the more biggest has been 20 people really. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you have, in some cases, when you have a, a lot of people, you can lose in some scenarios the, the, the scope, yeah, and the focus on some of the, of the member. This is unreality. It's like uh, when you are in the, in the college and the university, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, when you have a biggest um, um, a team, you need more resources to support you as, an, mm -hmm. as a leader. Of the of the process, yeah, because it's not easy. Uh, like a professor, it's not easy to manage a group of uh, ten people or versus other group of, of twenty people. So it's more like that, and also because uh, the resistance of the leadership. Because uh, when you have this core team, this is these are people that are take off from the normal responsibility. Yeah, and um, when you request uh, more uh, employees from the company, uh, it's possible that you are going to have more resistance yeah, to allow you to run uh, the Kaikaku or the Kaizen even. As more resources you request, uh, more risk that the leadership, you know, has more resistance uh, on, that, on that part. Okay, thanks. And uh, maybe one more question. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, you said at one point that very often people, even though you recommend starting with Kaikaku, <clears throat> people want to start with Kaizen events mm -hmm. and then move up. <clears throat> so how often do people want to go even smaller and start with Kaizen Teon, then Kaizen events, then Kaikaku? What, what do you say in that? Yeah, it, it is the more often really in my experience. Yeah, I'm talking from my experience. It's, it's the most common uh, to see the company uh, just focus on uh, smaller uh, activities, yeah? Uh, and it's not bad, yeah, because at the end, are improvement. So the only point is that uh, my recommendation is to change uh, the flow in order to, to, get, uh, to have more impact, you know, and to achieve uh, in a more quickly way the transformation really journey that you are looking for. Because at the end, the Kaizen Teya, mm -hmm. the, the, the Kaizen even are, are very nice, are needed, are good, because you are going to improve. But uh, uh, in order to, to get the real transformation, the cultural change, mm -hmm. I can tell you that the best formula for me has been that, uh, starting with, with Kaikaku, really. But, uh, but uh, honestly, uh, leadership... Um, a lot of people uh, prefer to start uh, step by step. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people say, I don't, I think that it's less risk involved when you start a step, you know, by a step. But uh, uh, in both scenarios, you have risk. The problem is, you know, that 
that you need to create the momentum, yeah, to, to allow the, the continuous improvement journey. This is my, my opinion. Okay. Well, very good. Um, well, Albanesa, thank you so much for um, doing the additional presentation uh, in English today. Um, thank, thank you also uh, for doing uh, the presentation in Spanish on December 8th. I uh, hope uh, we'll, we'll keep working to get a good audience for you and um, really appreciate it. We, we, uh, this is the first time we've asked a presenter to double uh, <laughs> present. So thank you for the double effort. We really appreciate it. And thank you for the experiences and, and the insights that you shared with everybody today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark, really, again, for, for the support and, and for the opportunity, you know, to be here with you, with your team, you know, uh, talking about a, a little of my experience, really. So thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm so happy. <laughs> sure.